This is a bluefin tuna. These fish can swim over 40 miles an hour, dive up to 3,000 feet deep, and travel over 6,000 miles per year. This one, however, is in a losing battle of tug of war with this guy. Alone, there is no way that a human could chase down and kill a bluefin tuna. But that's where a century of aerospace engineering, thousands of years of marine manufacturing, and our primal instinct to build devices that hurl sharp sticks evens the playing field. But let's forget all of the technical advancements it takes and talk about the hunter-friendly, freedom-loving state where all of this is actually legal. Believe it or not, California is the only place in the United States where you can consistently and legally spear bluefin tuna. We were heading out with Mad Max Sport Fishing, a well-known outfitter that specializes in putting you on these incredible fish. We suited up and headed out towards the Tuna Canyons, which were about 50 miles from shore. But before that, our guides Max and Austin wanted us to get acclimated to the water and make sure that we were weighted right. We started out by checking kelp patties, which are known for holding yellowtail and other pelagics. I couldn't help but feel like this was a bit of a test to see if we really knew what we were doing. I took a dive and saw these yellowtail. California yellowtail look pretty similar to amberjack back home in Florida. And for an amberjack, this is a pretty small fish. Because I've never seen one of these fish in the water, I wasn't sure if it was a big one or not but I decided to shoot it anyways. Austin had told me that when you shoot yellowtail, you need to fight the fish to keep it out of the kelp or they'll get tangled up and try to rip off the spear. I don't know what I'm shooting. It's the yellowtail, Hamachi okay. baby. We found another patty that had a lot of bait fish and this much bigger yellowtail was hanging around. I took a dive and grunted to try to bring the fish in. I took a few big kicks and cleanly missed the fish. I then tried reloading the gun without the guides noticing. Dropping us in on these patties was a way for the guides to gauge just how experienced we are, and missing these easy fish was not a great look. I didn't feel too bad after I saw Jake miss too. After a handful of dives, we were feeling pretty comfortable in the water, and we were ready to get after our target species. We hadn't traveled all this way for Yellowtail. Deep below the water's surface, underwater mountains create an upwelling of cold, nutrient-rich water. Microscopic phytoplankton absorb these nutrients in the California sun to reproduce at an incomprehensible rate. Millions of sardines and anchovies feast on the phytoplankton, forming huge schools not far from the coast. The tuna corral the bait balls towards the surface of the water, as if backing them against a wall. Then, one at a time, or all at once, the tuna rush through the school with their mouths wide open. The tuna burst through the surface, turning the water to foam as they feast on the bait. Hundreds of birds gather to join the assault from above, which can be seen from miles away. Max would drive from the tower of the boat and use his stabilized binoculars to search for foaming tuna. Once Max spotted a foamer, he would run the boat wide open to get there as soon as possible. Not only were we trying to get to the fish before they dove again, we wanted to beat any other boat to the school. The first boat there has the best opportunity at the fish before they dive. Once we got to the foamer, the fish can either swim under the boat or away from the boat. Austin would keep an eye on the depth finder to figure out if we should get in or not. If we marked the tuna like this, our job was to get down to them as soon as possible. Dive right under the boat! Dive, 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 dive! With your heart racing, you make your dive. You just went from 60 miles an hour while staring at a huge school of foaming tuna to holding your breath. You get to your target depth and look around. You missed them. You were either too slow to take your dive, or you didn't dive deep enough, or you just weren't looking in the right direction. At the surface, it's tempting to chase down the birds that seem so close, but there is no way you'll be able to swim faster than the tuna that are chasing that school of bait. It's time to get back into that rocket ship of a boat to get another chance of chasing down another school. We were only gonna get so many opportunities, so we needed to How learn from ahead. each other's like, mistakes if we were gonna make it happen. What? How far did you lead it when you missed? Oh, I, dude, I, I, I led mine a decent way. It's just, I think I was just like, just so, ever so slightly far away. Hey, show up, go down, just keep going down until you start seeing them. Go down 30 feet and then pull your head up, dude. And then just, there. Jake, Paul, Noah, and I all take turns on different schools, and at first, we're not having much luck. It was my turn, and I made sure to take a few extra breaths and tried to calm down before getting in. Uh, 
If there's one thing that Austin hammered into all of us, it's that these fish are moving fast. Even with these cannons we're shooting, we need to lead these fish when we pull the trigger. With this in mind, I get to my target depth, and I still don't see anything. I've only been down around 10 seconds, but my chest is already burning with the need to breathe. I decide to hang on at least a few more seconds, and there they are. I can barely see them below me. One fish, however, was swimming closer than the rest. I point the tip of my gun about a body length in front of the fish, and completely miss. This time, having led the fish too much. The only way to get dialed in is to do it again and again. So we got back in the boat. Shit. When you stop to consider the boat, the sonar, the stabilized binoculars, the spear guns, and all the other tools necessary for this type of hunting, we have a huge technological advantage over these fish. And even with all of that, we still can't connect with one. It's about this time that I ask myself a question. Why do we have such an innate desire to hunt something that's difficult to kill? I would think that if my next meal depended on it, we would be chasing those yellowtail from earlier. What? I didn't have too much time to ponder these questions until it was my turn again. I don't even notice the huge pod of oh, corpses yeah. behind us go, go, when go, I get go, go. in. All I can hear are the porpoises, and off in the distance I can just barely make out Jake's silhouette. I try to stay calm and dive as deep as I can. The water is so dirty that you can barely see the fish. I try tracking one, but change my mind to wait for a closer shot. I pull the trigger and watch the line take off. I'll remember this trip to the surface for the rest of my life. When you shoot a bluefin tuna, the float should take off. My float did not move at all, and Jake's moved even less. Austin, our guide who has killed dozens of bluefin, thinks both our shots pulled. What do you need? Wait. My line is so slack that I'm able to swim all the way back to the boat with the float in hand. Austin hands me the fighting float, but I'm pretty sure the fish is gone. There's no way a fish this big should fight this little. Fortunately, as soon as I clip on the fighting float, the fish starts to fight again, which brings me some relief. Once you clip on the fighting float, you basically use the clip to pull the fish in a little at a time. See all those sparkles in the water? Those are all scales from the bait fish the tuna were eating. This keeps swimming, right? This keeps swimming forward, right? It only took a few minutes to get to the end of the bungee, and Jake took a dive to secure a second shot in the fish. <laughs> yeah, man! Holy shit. That was a great shot. I'm gonna stone that thing. 
I a guess. big school came by, and I struggled with getting the gun, but instead of rushing it, I just, I waited, and then one of them just swam right to me. The one that wanted to be killed. Yeah. Shoot the fish that wants to be killed. The pressure was off for me at least, and it was time for the rest of the guys to make it happen. At this point, just about every direction we looked, we saw foaming tuna. So everyone worked to reload the gun and get back in the water. Max was already headed to the closest school. By the end of day one, everyone had either shot or caught at least two tuna, except myself. I spent the rest of day one filming with this camera, which I ended up destroying on day two. So unfortunately, I lost all of the footage. I could replace the camera, but I'll never be able to replace the videos of how good the rest of day one was. I wanted to mention that filming these videos takes a lot of time away from actually diving or fishing, so like and subscribe if you haven't already. After losing the camera, I dove hard chasing my second fish, mostly with little success. On this dive, there were a ton of tuna, and Jake shot first, which spooked the school. I didn't take my time and tried shooting at a fish that was way too far. One thing that's hard to prepare for is the water clarity. At one spot, you might have 100 foot of visibility, while only a mile away, you only have 20 feet. This makes gauging the distance of your shot really difficult. Then I had this dive, where I swam through a school of bait and saw a ton of tuna sitting underneath them, but none of them ever came close enough for a shot. This is my last dive of the day. I start my dive the same way as all the others, 
and try to remember everything I've learned on the trip so far. I land in a big school of tuna, and I start to line up on a bluefin. I decide to hold off to wait for a better shot. I stayed calm and lined up on this fish, which was coming a bit closer. I could see the spear through both sides of the fish, so I knew it was a good shot. Later we found that it took off so fast that it actually bent the shaft. Unlike my first bluefin, I didn't hit this one as good, and it took off with the buoy. I started bringing the fish in a little at a time, until it was close enough for Jake to dive down and get a second shot. Even when they're already shot, these fish move so fast it's difficult to line up a good second shot. Fortunately, Jake took his time here and got a really good shot in the head of the fish. I don't, I'm dude. One of the coolest parts about this fight is that a Navy helicopter circled a few times to watch the action. Let's go! I love that! Even with two spears in the fish, I'm still having a hard time getting it up the last few feet. Once I do get it close enough, I bear hug the fish while it shakes me around. With its final kicks, it knocks my knife out of my hand to sink to the depths. My knife now sits where this whole ecosystem started, at the base of some massive underwater mountain. Special thanks to Austin for taking these pictures of me after I destroyed my underwater camera. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. I know you're the only one that get to the game <laughs> yesterday, so I'm like, might as well. I'm always the camera guy, so it's always hard to get pictures. We had let one of the fillets sit on ice overnight. We started with the yellowtail, cut into healthy slices with a piece of serrano pepper on each one for a kick. We also sliced up some tuna and topped it with some ponzu and lime sauce. Oh yeah. The yellowtail tasted good, but the tuna tasted like success. This is why we travel across the country, build fast fishing boats, and design massive spear guns. We chase fish that are hard to kill because of the challenge. And the reward for go. surmounting the challenge is sweeter yes, because sir. of the struggle itself. <laughs> Mad Max sport fishing knows what's up. <laughs> yeah, man.